Amen. Thank you, Brendan and the band, for your ministry among us. I think music ministry speaks to us sometimes more than the spoken word, and it is a reminder of what this season is all about. And yet, that's the reason Jesus came, so that we would continue to do those things more than once a year. So thank you. Thank you all for your ministry. This is the season of Advent. Two weeks ago, we began this season, and the word Advent means coming or arrival. Advent is this season that's marked by expectation. It's marked by waiting, anticipation, or longing. And during this season, we in the church, we here at Lakewood United Methodist Church, share in that ancient longing for the coming of the Messiah, to celebrate Jesus' birth, to await also Jesus' second coming. Advent kind of looks back at the celebration of Jesus' birth that was fulfilled, that whole hope and promise that was fulfilled when Jesus was born, and at the same time, it also looks forward in hopeful anticipation of Jesus coming and that true fulfillment of Christ's kingdom that will come. Um, on the first Sunday of Advent, we looked at the theme of hope. Pastor Carson talked about the theme of hope, and last Sunday, he talked about the theme of peace. Today, we are talking about the theme of joy. So, joy. We can be joyful in the work that we do and joyful in the ways that we interact with one another. In the early, in the early church, Advent, this season of preparation, was a penitential time, meaning that it was like somber, sometimes reflective, kind of like the Lenten season. And it was a time for new believers or converts to prepare for baptism, to prepare to become members of the church. And they did that through some spiritual practices like prayer and fasting. And after a period of time of prayer and fasting, they wanted to make things a little more lighthearted. And so they came up on the third Sunday of Advent with the theme of joy. Um, it was called Gadete Sunday, which in Latin means rejoicing. And so um, on this third Sunday of Advent, we talk about rejoicing. And one of the scriptures that is used on this third Sunday of Advent is Mary's song of rejoicing. Uh, it's called the Magnificat. And again, it's Mary, uh, Jesus' mother's song of rejoicing. And it happens when Mary is visiting her cousin, Elizabeth, and she Learn, after she learns that she's pregnant, she goes to visit Elizabeth, and when Elizabeth greets her, uh, the baby loop, leaps in the womb, and she does this song of praise, or the Magnificat. So it's found in Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 56, and so I read these words for you today. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord will fulfill the promises he made to her. And then Mary responded with this song. With all my heart, I will glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor, favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, Everyone will consider me highly favored, because the Mighty One has done great things for me. 
Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone, from one generation to the next, who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months, and then she returned to her home. Please pray with me. Holy God, we thank you for this community of faith that reminds us of your presence, that reminds us that we are not alone on this journey. We thank you for Mary and her willingness to be a vessel. We thank you for Jesus who came to show us what love means. Oh God, in this season, help us to be present to you as we are present to one another. Oh God, we lift these things in your name. Amen. So, last week, Macaulay Culkin, how many of you know who he is? Macaulay Culkin was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Okay? Macaulay Culkin is most famous for his role or his portrayal as Kevin McAllister in the movie Home Alone. How many of you have seen that movie? Probably everybody. Almost everybody here, right? <laughs> well, Home Alone was released in 1990, 33 years ago. Does that make anybody in the room feel old? <laughs> I know, my gosh, wow. Home Alone was a movie that was written by the late John Hughes, and he wrote and directed some of the best films of all time, especially comedy films. And since Home Alone was released in 1990, it's become the highest grossing live action comedy film of all time. So it's pretty specific, but the highest grossing live action comedy film of all time. The film was so successful, it grossed $354 million that it actually became its own franchise, right? We've seen Home Alone 2, there had four sequels of the movie. And in my opinion, I still think the first one was the best one, right? I see some heads nodding, of course. Anyway, Macaulay Culkin is Kevin McAllister in this film. He's this eight-year-old boy who is mistakenly left at home or left behind when his family goes to Paris for Christmas. And on the night before they're to leave for that vacation, all of the family gathers at the house and they're all having a meal together and, and chatting, and Kevin gets ridiculed by his siblings and his cousins. And after he gets into this argument with his older brother, Buzz, he gets sent up to the third floor of the house for a timeout. And while he's up there, he's angry, and he stews, and he wishes that his family would just simply disappear, right? Well, during the night, there were storms and heavy winds blew out the electricity in their home. And of course, you know what that means. The alarm clocks get all messed up and therefore the family oversleeps. And in their confusion and in their rush to get to the airport, Kevin is accidentally left behind. He wakes up and he finds the whole house is empty. And what's his response? He is, of course, overjoyed because he really thinks that his wish has come true. His family has disappeared. No more parents telling him what to do. No more brothers or sisters or cousins ridiculing him. No more restrictions. No more rules, right? He has the house 
all to himself. He can do whatever he wants, right? We see him doing all kinds of crazy, <laughs> crazy things in the house all by himself. Did you ever want that kind of thing as you were a kid? Did you ever want to be by yourself? Any of you want that now as an adult too, right? <laughs> all right, you understand. Well, Kevin was thrilled about all of this until he realized that being home alone wasn't quite all it was cracked up to be. He was pretty vulnerable. And his joy turned into fear as he encountered his next door neighbor, Old Man Marley. You might remember Old Man Marley was rumored, it was rumored, that he murdered his family with a snow shovel back in 1958. <laughs> And Kevin also has to ward off those wet bandits, Harry and Marv, this pair of burglars who've been breaking into all of the houses in the neighborhood, at least the vacant ones, the ones they knew where people were on vacation. And so the movie is filled with all of these funny scenes of Kevin warding off the bandits by making his house look like there's a crowd there having a party and music and all kinds of stuff and even setting up a bunch of booby traps when the bandits discover that Kevin is really in there by himself. The reality of his situation settles in and Kevin becomes fearful. I'm sure that at some point in all of our lives we can relate to Kevin. For many of us, one of the things that we fear most is being alone. The fear of being alone challenges us. It makes us realize that we may have to face life alone and it's scary whether we're eight years old or whether we're 80 years old. <laughs> it can be scary. But the good news, the good news of the Christmas story is that God never leaves us alone. God is always present. God wanted a relationship with us. And so he sent his son, Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God with us. And in all of life's circumstances, we can rely on Emmanuel, God with us. In the scripture that I read from the Gospel of Luke today, we heard that when Mary found out that she was pregnant, she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Now, there was a reason why Mary chose this particular cousin. Of all of the women that Mary must have known, Elizabeth would be the only one who would understand her situation because Elizabeth herself was pregnant under some really unique <laughs> circumstances. Elizabeth was an older woman who had never had any children. And everyone, including Elizabeth, and her husband, Zachariah, assumed that she would never have any children. And yet, both she and her husband longed. They con continued to long for a child. Children were and are still considered a blessing. But in that day, it was really important for a person, a family, a couple to have children. And they prayed for that blessing to come upon them. And so when Mary, Mary finds herself miraculously pregnant, there's only one person, only one woman that she can turn to who she would be sure would understand her circumstances. And that woman just happened to be her cousin, Elizabeth. Now, if you think about it, God could have chosen anyone to be the mother of John the Baptist. Elizabeth was the mother of John the Baptist. But he chose Elizabeth because she was related to Mary. So that when Mary got the news of her pregnancy, she wouldn't be 
alone. She wouldn't be alone. God provided a mentor for Mary. God provided support and encouragement for Mary. God didn't leave her home alone, right? God provided her with the gift of Elizabeth's presence. The gift of Elizabeth's presence. And so Mary made this 80-mile journey to be with her cousin Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth also needed help as a pregnant woman, as an older pregnant woman in particular, as she's getting ready to give birth to her first child. And so God provided Elizabeth with the gift of Mary's presence. God provided for both Elizabeth and Mary to have someone who understood what they were going through, someone who could provide support. And so the miracle, the miracle of the Christmas story is that God sent his son Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. It's not only does that mean that we are never alone in God's presence, but it also provides support for us and encourages us along the journey. We have people like Mary and Elizabeth had for each other. People who provide us with that gift of presence. And then we provide for others that gift of presence, the gift of presence. So, not going to be too long-winded today where we've got communion coming too. But I want to say, as we experience Christmas, as we experience Christmas, may we realize that God does not intend for us to go through this life alone. God doesn't intend for us to go through this life alone. We experience Christmas, we experience Jesus when we reach out to God and we agree to follow him and we allow him into our lives and we unwrap that gift of presence that he gives to us. We also experience Christmas when we reach out to others, when we reach out to the people that God has placed into our lives and we give them the gift of our presence. So this Christmas, as we prepare, just two weeks, Christmas is just two weeks away. Can you imagine that already? As we prepare for Christmas, I invite you to enter into that deep-seated joy that comes from never being alone. Enter into that relationship with Jesus Christ and reach out to those people that you need in your life and those who need you in their lives. Let's be present with joy to one another. Amen? <laughs>